So Sweden has decided to declare war against France, the United Kingdom and the British Raj. I can't see this going altogether well for them. Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name of course is Robert Potato and this is Age of Civilizations 2 AI Battles. And in this episode, we are going to be having a little look at World War II. Um, the scenario starts on the 1st of June 1936. World War II, of course, started uh, at the very beginning of September in 1939 and went all the way up until the 2nd of September uh, in 1945. So we're going to run this, uh, this simulation. We are in spectator mode at the moment. We have the all-seeing eye uh, to look down on exactly what is going on. Uh, and we are going to be able to see exactly how things happen uh, when, you know, you take a step back and you have a little look uh, a little look at all the players. So, you know, we're going to be keep keeping a close eye on all of the European powers. We're also occasionally going to head on over to the, um, to the Southeast Asian uh, front and the Pacific campaign. We're going to see, we're going to see what happens. No real guarantees on what could happen. Uh, it's, it's pretty wild, I think. There's... No real indication that anything is going to happen uh, remotely similarly as to how it happened in the actual Second World War, but that's not a problem. Uh, if we go and take a little look at the diplomacy screen right now, we can see that before kicking things off, uh, Germany is in a uh, an alliance. Uh, Germany has an alliance with Italy, uh, and then France has an alliance with uh, the British Raj and the United Kingdom, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all of the diplomatic relations that the game starts with, that the scenario starts with, should I say. Uh, just Germany and the Italians and uh, uh, France and the UK and the British Raj. Um, Germany also likes Austria a little bit. Uh, that's nice to note. Uh, nothing with Czechoslovakia, so very, very interesting indeed. If we have a little look at the Soviet Union, they've got a non-aggression pact with Poland for a wee bit, but not too long. And Poland has a vassal and uh, does not like Germany very much. So, very interesting stuff there. Anyway, I think it's probably a good time to uh, to get this thing underway and see exactly what happens. So there's been a bunch of troop movements, and you can now see that there is a significant number of German forces on the French border, the Western Front. Is that the Western Front? Who knows? Um, but yeah, there's a heck of a lot of troops over here. Thousands and thousands of troops. Uh, there are a couple near Poland. But Poland has not got any troops anywhere near the German border. So if Germany was to attack Poland, then that would probably be a fairly swift conflict. Uh, we're looking really to see what Italy does. Uh, Italy's relationship with, uh, with, with Germany is still negative. They are still technically allies, although that could all change. Okay, and with that, we have our very first battle. It started uh, on the 26th of December, 1936, and it is between Netherlands and the Dutch East Indies. So, not a not a battle to write home about, not a, not a conflict to write home about, but um, that officially makes the Netherlands the first to declare, uh, to declare war. I don't think it's really going to matter in the grand scheme of things, but hey-ho, there you go. It was the Netherlands. And it looks like we actually have a slight conflict all the way over here. We've got China going up against Shanxi. Very, very interesting indeed. Uh, now, something to note, it's not the communist China, it is the fascist China which has declared war on Shanxi, I believe. No, it was Shanxi that declared war on the fascist China. Okay, so that's probably a conflict that we're going to want to stay abreast of. It's going to uh, it's going to really affect the way that Japan plays, uh, depending on what happens in China. So uh, always good to keep abreast of the South East the Southeast Asian affairs. Okay, a little bit of an interesting conflict has just started up. Uh, Saudi Arabia has declared war on Italy. Interesting. Not really entirely sure uh, what the logic is there. Um, an interesting point to note with with this scenario is that all of the territory that is controlled by the colonial powers, so, you know, Italy, uh, Belgium, the UK, Portugal, Spain, etc., 
that all counts as just regular territory for these countries uh, in this game as it currently stands. So that is going to be a huge advantage for Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia will have, yeah, they'll have a couple of troops dotted around. However, I would imagine Italy will not have many troops. However, Saudi Arabia can quite simply cross this, cross the, cross the Red Sea and they will be taking what is in effect Italian homeland. So that will count uh, very much, uh, very much as just regular war score. And of course, Italy also has Somalia as well as the coast uh, just off Ethiopia. So there's lots of Italian territory to be taken by the Saudi Arabians here. It could go completely differently, but it's very, very interesting. And also on that note, it looks like Germany has declared war with Saudi Arabia, or should I say Saudi Arabia has declared war uh, on Italy and therefore Germany came to Italy's defense. I don't think there's much German colonial territory. In fact, I don't think there's any German colonial territory uh, around, not after the First World War anyway. So Saudi Arabia is not going to have a, a field day attacking Germany. Uh, but Germany might actually send some troops. And if Germany sends some troops... Danish troops up there. Germany sends some troops, then that could potentially mean that Europe is uh, is less defended. Alrighty. This is a massive conflict. Um, Sweden has gone to war with France. Uruguay has gone to war with Argentina. Honduras has gone to war with Argentina. And Costa Rica has gone to war with the Dominican Republic. That is quite a lot of stuff. What really matters to us primarily is that France decided to attack Sweden. That was a very interesting choice, and I'm not entirely sure why it happened. However, um, it does probably mean that a bunch of the French troops that are in France proper are going to be moved to uh, to attack Sweden. Sweden doesn't really have that many troops, not in comparison to France. France has got quite a lot more. Uh, although, will it matter? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but what I do know is that France is likely to move out a whole bunch of troops, and therefore Italy might be able to move in. Switzerland might be able to move in. Anything is possible. Another major conflict has started this time at the opposite side of the world to Europe. China has declared war on Japan. Very, very interesting, this. Uh, these are two absolute powerhouses, really, uh, in the southeast in the southeast region. Uh, Japan has about 5,000 troops ready to go just in Tokyo. Uh, and then about another, what is that, 6,000, 6, 7,000, another 6, 7,000 just on the Korean Peninsula. And then there is a, another uh, force already in, already in China, basically, uh, that is ready to defend from about 10, 15, 15,000, 15,000, 20,000, about 20,000 Chinese troops. Uh, so it's going to be the Japanese, the Japanese going, uh, going up the Korean Peninsula and uh, probably probably invading via sea all of these Chinese provinces, although we'll have to see over the next couple of turns how that plays out. Meanwhile, over in Europe, uh, we are seeing the French stack of 24,000 uh, slowly splitting up and spreading out and doing the maximum amount of damage that they possibly can do to Sweden. And I don't think that there is any coming back uh, for Sweden from this pretty impossible really when you have about 30,000 troops uh, just rumbling through your territory and another 8,000 coming uh, and another 14,000 coming and another 11,000 coming. You get the picture. There's a heck of a lot of troops coming and uh, it looks like Sweden might be having a bad day. Back to Asia, we can see that Japan has made some slight inroads into taking territory on the Chinese mainland. However, it seems that China has gone for a sneak attack uh, round the back and will be invading the Korean Peninsula, which is pretty much undefended. Japan still has 100, 112,000 ducats to spend and a 17,000 stack of troops uh, in Tokyo. So can definitely do something about this stack on the Korean Peninsula. It just depends. Will we see Japan move that 17 stack? I'm not entirely sure if we will. Uh, certainly, in terms of the number of troops that Japan has on the Chinese mainland, that's enough to go on a that's enough to go on an effective rampage through the Chinese territory until this uh, until this defensive stack arrives to kill it. So we're going to see reinforcements. We're going to see more troops come in from here, here, and here. And uh, presumably, we're going to see a larger number of, uh, of Japanese troops in comparison to Chinese troops. Although, 
do not forget that China has got a little bit of money in the uh, in the tank herself. Could raise could raise some considerable armies uh, around this area and therefore repel the Japanese attack. However, I think it's going to be a uh, a pretty a pretty bloody month for uh, for Japan and China actually. As, uh, as both sides will see casualties. So it looks like the sneak attack that China had invested so much in was completely futile, and it was repelled entirely uh, by Japanese soldiers. And speaking of Japanese soldiers, they have made considerable inroads into, uh, into China. Not considerable in terms of territory, but in terms of reinforcements. They have managed to effectively reinforce both positions, both forward positions that they have in China now, uh, which is very, very interesting indeed. Uh, it's also worth noting that Mongolia recently declared war uh, against China, which will further, further hinder hinder uh, China's effort to defend from Japan. Uh, Mongolia has already started going uh, for Chinese territory up here. Uh, also, there is this country, which is also currently at war with China. That was very recent that they declared war as well, so... As you can see, China is not having a very good time right now, and all of this will most certainly uh, help the Japanese take a lot of territory very, very quickly indeed. If we go and have a look over at Sweden, you can see that uh, Sweden has been almost entirely gobbled up by France. Um, it's almost completely disappeared, really. Uh, there's only a couple of coastal provinces left, really, to take. The entirety of the north has been taken, bar one province there. So... We'll be expecting a peace a peace settlement very, very shortly in Sweden, but not a very good day for Sweden. Not quite sure why Sweden decided to attack uh, to attack the Allies. Not very smart. Taking a little look at the Saudi Arabian-Italian conflict, uh, we can see that Italy is making significant inroads into Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia really doesn't have anything like the number of troops that uh, that Italy has. It also looks like Germany is getting in on a piece of the action as well. Uh, they've got an 11,000 stack of troops there, and Italy is bringing, you know, 20,000 troops of its own. Probably 25, 20, about 27, probably about 35,000 uh, troops of its own down into Saudi Arabian territory. So I would also expect, as well as Sweden, Saudi Arabia will be disappearing very, very shortly. And if not disappearing, will be severely hindered in ever being a proper nation again. We can see that Poland has just recently declared war uh, on... Or sorry, should I say that Romania has just recently declared war on Poland. And Oman has also declared on Poland. So uh, there's going to be a flashpoint, I would imagine, that there's... These three provinces here, uh, which belong, that one belongs to Romania, obviously these two belong to Poland. I would suspect that we're going to see all of the Polish troops flood down into these two provinces and the Romanian the Romanian troops are all going to be flooding into, into these three provinces as well. So um, this could really, really, really uh, unsettle Europe, I imagine. Uh, so it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens there. Um, interestingly enough, um, Germany has still got 27,000 troops in Germany proper, although that really isn't that many as to what they uh, as to what they used to have. Almost all of their troops are now down in Saudi Arabia, uh, but Germany could be coming away with some pretty decent territory if they uh, if they play their cards right in Saudi Arabia. So that's definitely something to watch as well. A little bit of a conflict that's going to be uh, that's going to be happening over the next couple of years or the next couple of months, I should say, maybe years. Who knows? Uh, Portugal has declared war on Spain. Or should I say, Spain has declared war on Portugal. Um, either way, not something that uh, that happened in the Second World War, although an interesting development nonetheless. Uh, Norway has weirdly gone to war against Czechoslovakia. Not entirely sure why that was a sensible decision to make. It's quite a distance, but there you go. Uh, still waiting for France to be fully invaded. It looks like the last stronghold of the Swedish army is in... Lotorp. So we're just waiting for that to be uh, we're waiting for that to be conquered. Uh, the Finnish uh, the Finnish fight against the Soviet Union is a mixed bag. Uh, at the end of the day, I would definitely expect the Soviet Union to win, although it might take slightly longer than uh, than expected. Uh, the Soviet Union is prepping a whole bunch of troops for invasion into Turkey. They're actually transporting them via uh, via water rather than through the 
bunch of provinces because there is just so many provinces in the Soviet Union it takes ages to get anywhere. If we go and have a little look at China, you can see that it's just a total, total mess. Um, interesting to note, Japan has not really moved out very far uh, from the original position that they had up here. However, subsequently, it looks like Manchuko has, uh, has declared war on Japan and is doing a darn sight better than China was doing against Japan. Uh, Japan still is about 20, 30,000 troops just chilling, uh, just chilling in China, although they do have another 25,000 or so in their capital. Problem is, is that all of the Korean Peninsula has subsequently been lost, and uh, it doesn't look like they're going to stop losing. So we'll have to see what Japan does, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens there, but certainly the thing that I'm looking forward to very, very shortly is Sweden finally being defeated, although apparently the Allies are just moving uh, single digits of troops into uh, into Lotorp. So that's a, that's a questionable play. It also looks like France has declared with the British, or sorry, Portugal has declared war against France and the British Raj. I don't think Portugal has got much of a leg to stand on. I think Portugal will be done very, very shortly, although you got to bear in mind that this war that is currently ongoing um, is only 17% in Spain's favor, because the thing that you have to bear in mind is that Portugal has a lot of territory around the world. Uh, they got colonies over here, over here, over here, and I believe they've even got... Oh, no, I thought they had something over in, uh, in South America, but no, they've got a whole bunch of stuff in Africa. Uh, I would imagine that it's all going to get taken. Is that a Portuguese colony? Yeah, there's a Portuguese colony over here. Uh, it is all going to get taken, I would imagine, but it's just going to take a long, long time. Well, we knew it would happen. It was just a matter of how long. And it looks like, officially, that Germany has attacked France. The year is, uh, the year is 1941. The date is the 24th of February. Hey, Orbital Potato here. Thank you very much for watching. I wanted to try something a little bit different with this series, so if you've got any thoughts or feedback, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have any other suggestions for future uh, AI battle scenarios that I should cover, please let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.